today on Give Me Shelter. Pet Helpers saves 14 dogs from being euthanized at another shelter. But can the staff handle this sudden surge of animals? Okay, turn of events. We need to get them spayed and neutered and out of here. What? Jason and Brian rescue a litter of feral puppies. But will they adapt to their new environment? If we can't get these guys to eat, they're going to starve to death. You know, Brian's got a good hand when it comes to these puppies, but uh, they got to eat. Or they're not going to make it. What do you have? Adorable little puppies! They're so cute! How many? There's nine puppies and five adults. I got a call from a local shelter this morning that they are filled to capacity, and they asked us to pull some adult dogs and puppies. They were slated to be euthanized this afternoon, so of course ran right up there and took as many as we could. The most rewarding things about the job is to do transport because we actually are able to physically pick animals up from hours away from being put to sleep and take them to a place that they'll never have to face that again. The puppies are going to go into foster care. Okay. So not even overnight, they're going no. straight into foster? They should be going right into foster care. Okay. Got it? Come on blows me away. No matter how many transports I go on, I still cannot believe they were going to be euthanizing that afternoon for no reason. Some of them do have very treatable conditions like heartworms, but the shelters just can't. They don't have the resources to treat it, and it's really sad. Oh, he's my favorite, little Reese. He's cute. I do think she's the prettiest, though. Yeah, both of these guys, yeah. they said, were there for a while. And let's go finish pulling the crates and then... Okay. This um, one's my favorite. Oh, we gotta move the puppies. We yeah. left them. Jason and Brian are heading to Soul Agree, an area that has become a haven for feral and abandoned dogs. This is their second attempt to find a litter of puppies that was reported to the shelter. Dozens of dogs and puppies have been rescued from Sol Agree, but the remaining dogs in this area are so feral that no one has been able to catch them. The leader of the pack, Queenie, has given birth to more than 300 puppies in her lifetime. We had somebody call and say that they'd seen some puppies, so we're coming out here again to look and see if we find them. I'm not sure if we're gonna find anything. Sure hope we do, we hadn't found any in a few weeks. There's Queenie. Yeah. I mean, she's dropped. Yeah, I thought it was a futile expedition, man, but... She's had puppies. That looks like puppies. Her memories are full of milk, uh, so she must have a litter out here somewhere. We're gonna find them if I have to spend the night. Let's check the hot spots, man, because if they're there, if they're here, they're gonna be there. She's getting loud, and we must be... There must be something going on, man. She's raising Cain, dude. All right, Maddie, now you're in charge of making sure that they don't go flying. Here we go. Oh. oh. Yeah, this isn't bad. Are you okay on that end? Yeah. Okay. Whenever I see puppies that come from high kill or high euthanasia shelters, it always makes me pretty sad. And all these cute little puppies we just got could have been next. So I'm really, really glad that we were able to pull all of them. And now we'll be able to find everybody forever, Holmes. All right. The eagle has landed. I think they look like little 
What, little pity? Yeah, their mom's a pit bull. Oh, you saw her? Uh-huh. What'd she look like? She was gorgeous. Why, where is she? She's there. We have plenty of pit bulls. It's tough on me because I, I want to make my staff happy and I know that they have such big hearts and it makes me feel awful when I have to tell them, no, I didn't take that dog. We were not able to accommodate her at our shelter right now. The priority was to get the puppies out of the kennel, but they assured me that they will do everything they can to, to try to get her into a good situation as well. That was a potential foster, so I'm gonna call her. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? Bethany's working right now on trying to figure out where we are going to place the puppies as well as some of our adult dogs that were just pulled. Puppies are very susceptible to any kind of disease. Their immune systems are obviously weak since they're so young. For them to be in this environment for any period, especially over a 24-hour period, is detrimental to their health. So I have to call all the fosters and arrange foster times, foster pickups. She's going to try to figure out some people that can come and pick up now because if they don't, we're not really sure where we're going to put these dogs. All right, I'm going to look under here first. The puppy's chances of survival are slim right now because of the risk of disease and predators like foxes and coyotes. So they must get them into a safe home as soon as possible. If I don't get them now, then I might not ever catch them. Once they get to be 10 weeks old, they're running. Huh? Huh? That's getting weird with Queenie because she's always stayed at a distance. She's getting more, more comfortable coming a little bit closer to me. Sooner or later, we're going to come to a head, and it'll probably be when I'm stealing one of her kids. Hey, man, I can, I can see them underneath here, man. I see a bunch of little bodies, man. I, I got to go deeper. If I yell, will you please grab the back of my feet and pull? I will grab you by the feet and pull you out. All right, hold on. Uh, one's kind of running to me. Yeah, you keep crying, baby. That's all right. It's cool. I'm going home. All right. All right, can you pull your hands over here, Brian? Yep. <laughs> got him. Got it? All right. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Come on. Ow. Oh, dude, man, these guys are young. I think they're, they're just a little over two weeks. No wonder mom's mad. I'm so sorry, Queenie. <laughs> I feel awful taking these kids. I feel I'm like I'm kidnapping these puppies. I know I'm doing the right thing, but I'm not exactly making friends with these guys doing this, so. That's right. Go and damage babies. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's always nice to know that we've got them in a controlled environment. They're not out there in the woods and starting to get cold outside at night, so we don't know, you know, what, don't know what's, what would happen if they were to stay out there. All right. So mission one accomplished. Puppies in, now we need fosters. Yep. <laughs> Gotta get the puppies into foster homes right now because we don't want them in the shelter. What they do have immunity wise are from their mother and that won't last very long. So as soon as we can get them into a foster home, it's the most sanitary environment they can be in, less likely that they'll come down with anything if they don't already have it. As Jason and Brian are getting ready to leave with the puppies, they notice an unfamiliar face. A new dog has appeared on the scene. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. Somehow she's been let into the tribe of Sola Green. Um, and she's not feral, dude. She's completely domesticated. Can't get this new queenie to get close to me just yet. She's hanging out with Queenie. Sooner we get her, the better. Uh, because she'll learn how to be feral if um if we don't get her while she's still domestic. Can't really take her right now because I don't have permission. Not that I ask for permission too much, but I, I can only get in so much trouble one day at a time, you know. Well, this makes, how many litters for her do you think this makes? I mean, this is for us. She's probably had at least 200, 300 puppies in her, in her lifetime. In her lifetime. So six, seven litters that we've stolen from her. I'd, I'd be mad at me too, man. <laughs> 
Come on, Queenie. Come on, Queenie. Hop. Come on, follow your baby's right on in the car, girl. She waiting on. All right, man, so you ready for seven babies in the house? Yep. All right. Go team. <laughs> Go team soul. <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> Jump in the car. Got these babies in the car. We're going to get out of here. Queenie's raising hell. We'll grab some meds from the shelter, and uh, hopefully we can find a, a foster aside from Brian. Jason and Brian will get the puppies vaccinated at the shelter before feeding them at Brian's house, where they will stay overnight. The idea of this whole pull was to get dogs for the fashion show. The Spitz and the Dachshund are two of the best looking dogs to go to the fashion show. So we have to see if we can get her spayed tomorrow. Maybe we should go address this like right yeah, now. I we need should. my phone. Okay, okay, let's go to the spay neuter clinic. Pet Helpers is participating in a puppy fashion show in a couple days. So Danya and Bethany will need to make sure that one of the dogs, named Pearl, is spayed in time for the event. Is there any way that you guys can get a Dachshund spayed tomorrow? Yeah? You're awesome. Nice. All right, great. Even though tomorrow is Dr. Love's day off, he has decided to come in and spay Pearl so she can make it to the fashion show and hopefully get adopted at the event. So then why don't we hold off putting her in foster care then? Um, as long as we have space for her. Yeah. While Danya and Bethany sort out which dogs need to be placed into foster homes, the staff continues to vaccinate the puppies. Hi, guys. Hey guys. God, those brown ones are huge. So these puppies seem bigger than what we were told. We thought that they were six weeks, but they seem bigger. And so we were thinking we were going to have to find foster homes for these guys, but now I'm not so sure. Sarah decides to take another look at the paperwork and realizes that they were given the wrong birth date. Wait, Bethany. We don't need Foster. Hold on. Well, can you hold on for one second for me? What? Yeah, turn of events. They're not six weeks. They're 10 weeks old. So we don't need Fosters for any of them. We need to get them spayed and neutered and out of here. Elizabeth, this is Bethany. Can I call you right back? So after a long day of calling and finding foster homes for these puppies that were six weeks old, um, it has been determined that they are actually 10 weeks old. Therefore, they do not need foster. Maybe we need to go back to the spay neuter clinic now and find out what they can do. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, do okay. we, we have gender, so we can just... All right, let me go find out. Oh, God, okay. Oh. So now it is my job, at the end of the day, to call all these fosters and disappoint them with telling them that they do not have a puppy to pick up. Hey, Trish, how are you? <laughs> hey, it's Bethany from Pet Helpers. So, um, just kidding on the puppies. <laughs> okay, yep, you're looking at me. I'm taking you. Just right, your little ears. Watch your little teeny tiny ears. Jason and Brian are back at Brian's house with the seven puppies they rescued from Sol Agree. They have been vaccinated and are now ready to have their temperatures taken. 98.6. Yeah. It's a little low. For this first puppy's got a low temp and uh, it's not good. It's not good. We need to keep it around 101, 102, something like that. All right, baby. 98.4. Come on, we can go some more. We can go some more. If they start dropping below like 100, 101, then they're gonna freeze, they're gonna get sick, they're gonna die. Away from their mother for the first night, they're in the house for the first time. This could potentially be bad. I think we can bring them back, I'm just worried. Was, is the paperwork said that they were six weeks, but when, when we got them here, they reevaluated the paperwork and they're actually 10 weeks. So we don't even need to be putting them in foster. They're, we're gonna try to get them straight in surgery and just get them adopted. All right, thank you, honey. Bye-bye. 
So after nonstop hustle and bustle since 9 a.m., I have called everybody, I have found fosters, I have let fosters down, but it was all worth it because the puppies will be adopted, everybody's happy and healthy, and we again have saved some lives. So now the workload has turned from finding foster care to the actual kennel staff at the end of the day having to come together to not only name the puppies but get them completely medically intaken and then set them up to spend the evening here. So it's a lot of work in a short amount of time. All right, and I am done. I know it would be very helpful if I did stay, but as far as intaking, don't know too much about it, so I wouldn't be very helpful. And you're leaving now, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, alrighty. But I'll be in a little early in the morning to make sure the rest of them are taken care of to go first thing. Okay. Despite having to stay late at work, the staff must come together to make sure all of the puppies are healthy and ready to be spayed and neutered by tomorrow morning so they can be adopted as soon as possible. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. All right, front desk is going to not like this, but someone's going to have to stay late to intake them. There's two of them. I know, but I'm just saying. No okay. one's going to like it, but can, I mean. Yeah, want me to come to up with you? Like... Yeah, and just, okay. we'll have to make it clear they have to be intaken before they leave. Yep. Yeah, let, it, let us go break the news, so. Unfortunately, it is the end of the day, and the front desk staff is not going to be happy about having to stay to get them in, but it, it's part of the job. Okay, guys, we need to put the nine puppies into the system because they're being spayed and neutered tomorrow. It just has to get done, like, now. Yeah. I was a little less than happy just because it had already been a long, stressful day. Now they have to stay probably the latest because they can't do what they need to do until we finish what we need to do with intake. So they are staying, but I don't think they're happy about it. All right, Peppermint. No longer a number, now a name. They need to be weighed, they need all their shots. It's all hands on deck, we're all in there. Cat staff is helping even though they are puppies. We have two of our techs from next door at the spay neuter clinic, so we're all pitching in to get these guys intaken and into our system so they can be adopted. The puppies' temperatures are still low and now they are refusing to eat. Without food in their bellies, they may not make it through the night. If we can't get these guys to eat, they're going to starve to death. You know, Brian's got a good hand when it comes to these puppies, but uh, they got to eat. They're not going to make it. Just come on it. Just come on it. At that age is when they would be feeding off of mom, so the bottle is the best thing that kind of imitates what, what feeding off of mom is like. It's like okay. Come on. You're just chewing. You're not getting any. There's a couple drops. Oh, you got it. Oh, he figured it out? After a couple attempts, now they're starting to eat. They're getting the hang of the bottle. It takes a little bit of, of encouragement and then being hungry enough. Kind of have to get it right there at the right temperature and then they'll get the hang of it. You got tweezers? You got a tick? Yeah. T? Little tiny, tiny ticky. Little baby ticky on a tiny puppy. Ticks can cause Lyme disease. Lyme disease is known to kill dogs and definitely kill a puppy. These guys have no immune system. So a tick can be a big deal. Do you want to hold her while I try to get this tick or do you think you can get this tick? I'll see if I can get it. Oh, I got it. Right, you got it. You probably should have tweezers to make sure you get the head out, but I, I think I got it fast enough before he dug in. Hopefully, you know, this is one of a million things we're going to do to save these puppies' lives, starting with the tick. I mean, who sleeps like that? Really? She could care less. Having seven little bottle babies is, is a lot. By the time you get done feeding the seventh one, it's almost time to start feeding the first one back again. Brian's not gonna sleep because these guys are gonna eat every two hours. So this is a lot for anyone to handle, but uh, if anyone can handle it, it's Brian. Oh. I just caught a big pee right down my shirt. Well, that's, dude, we can, we should get a picture with our, my poo and your pee. Puppy love. <laughs> 
if we can't find fosters in the next day or two, they'll they'll certainly stay with me until until that time comes. But we've got a great group of uh, neonatal puppy fosters that know what to do and, and know how to take care of these guys. <laughs> Beyond cute, okay. Now that all seven puppies have been fed, their temperatures are slowly starting to rise. Brian will keep a watchful eye on them overnight and make sure they are fed every three hours. I'm gonna go change out of my P-shirt. Why? I had my poo shirt on. <laughs> Did I forget to tell you guys and all this? What? The puppies were born in the kennel. The mom came in, I just realized. The mom came in pregnant? Yeah, and they were. They came in and the, the, they gave birth right there in the kennel. Oh my goodness. Isn't that horrible to give birth in a kennel? I don't know, you're done. I can imagine that. Josh can drive me crazy with his sense of humor because sometimes he just doesn't know when to use it and when not to use it, and now is not the time. Animal welfare can be a very stressful type of environment. I make jokes about everything. She is short, so some of my jokes do go over her head sometimes. So this incredibly chaotic day is finally over. I'm so proud of how everyone worked together. It's what makes me most proud of pet helpers, and I love being a part of this organization because of how everyone gets together really well and gets the job done. Through all the complaints and the hiccups, at the end of the day, we have some really incredible people that are all here for the mission and for the long haul. Good job. Hungry puppy dogs. Wow. <laughs>